Okay, I admit it. Back in 2021, I paid over £700, about 850 US dollars, for a second hand chair, the Herman Miller Embody. At the time, I was fed up with my Secret Lab Titan and had just returned my brand new Aeron Remastered. After 4,000 hours of use, do I regret spending a small fortune to sit in the Embody instead of treating my family or perhaps saving for the future? What additions have I made to the chair to make it more comfortable? Do I still find the arms janky? Do I still disagree with Herman Miller's assertion that a decent chair doesn't need a headrest? Let's get into it. So we'll be stepping through each of the six categories you see in this table and determining whether after 4,000 of usage in the Embody, I feel happy or grumpy about that particular category. So let's talk about build quality. When I initially posted my video comparing the Embody to the Aeron after 60 hours in the Embody, I was directly comparing those two chairs. I'd used the Aeron for a couple of weeks at the time. I said the Embody had a great overall build quality. I mentioned that the creaking detracted from the overall premium experience. The noise at the time made me question whether the chair would last 12 years. So how do I feel now, 4,000 hours later? Well, the creaking doesn't really bother me personally. Uh, would it really have been possible for Home Miller to deliver such a flexible backrest that enables me to really stretch out without the creaking? It seems, in retrospect, like a worthwhile trade-off. When I look at the chair, it looks pretty much exactly the same as the day I bought it secondhand uh, back in 2021, so over 18 months ago. Um, do I think the chair will last until 2030, which would take it up to 12 years since it first came out of the factory? Yeah, I think it probably will. I, I have no concerns about that. So overall for build quality, I'm going to put this in the happy category. Next up is seat pan comfort. When I recorded my initial 60 hour Embody video, I mentioned that my tailbone or coccyx became a little sore after eight to 10 hours of use, and that I found the Aeron more comfortable in this particular respect. Three months after buying the Embody, I ended up buying some cheap foam and adding that to my chair. Adding the foam completely resolved the tailbone issue for me. I should add a pretty hefty caveat here, that my 2018 Embody would not have had the comfortable padding that I believe was added to more recent chairs such as the Logitech Gaming Embody that launched in 2020. I should also add that I've not actually tried uh, that more recent foam, I've only tried my own custom foam on my particular Embody. Now that I've added this extra foam, I'm a very happy chappy. Let's move on to the Embody's armrests. In terms of specs, I'd say they're pretty clearly one of the weaker aspects of the chair, lacking the ability to move back and forth uh, to get nice and close to your desk. In practice, however, the armrests have grown on me. I love how high the armrests can go. Great for chilling out uh, in meetings if I'm in listening mode uh, and giving my shoulders a bit of a break. I also love how low the armrests can go. If I want to hold something on my lap, uh, maybe my daughter sitting on my lap, for example, uh, there's easily enough room uh, for that if I push the armrests all the way down. I didn't give the range of armrest height uh, enough credit back in my original video. I did find the armrests slightly uncomfortable after extended use on my elbows, um, so I opted to add some armrest cushions. Uh, these are some third party cushions, uh, not, not provided by Herman Miller, but they were pretty cheap. Uh, I'll throw a link in the description if you're interested. I put some zip ties on those, attached them to my armrests. They come off occasionally, uh, but it's no big deal and I find them really, really comfortable. Um, that probably wouldn't have been necessary on other premium chairs like the Aeron, for example. I've also learned to live with the quirks of the armrests. Um, rather than using the armrests themselves to move the chair, for example, I've learned to use the seat pan or, or the back of the chair to move the embody. This means it's actually quite unusual for me to move the armrests and experience that kind of janky feeling that bothered me when I first bought the chair. 
and that lots of Embody reviewers mention. Um, the armrests tend to stay, in, in terms of my chair, in the same horizontal position, uh, so that's as close uh, to me as the adjustment will allow. In terms of that sort of janky or bumpy feeling itself when moving the armrests, I've had a few comments from people telling me that pulling the armrest all the way up or, or maybe pushing the button would avoid that janky or sort of bumpy feeling. I haven't found that to be the case. Um, I'd love it if someone could point out what I'm doing wrong here. I'm reasonably satisfied with the embody armrests now that I've added the third party cushions and I don't find myself wishing I used another chair just because of those armrests. So again, I'm a happy chappy. Let's talk embody recline. Now reclining in this chair clearly was and still is a real high point for me. I find that reclining in the embody really helps to relieve built up tension in my back. Sure, it's not quite as good as lying flat, say, in my bed. Um, some of the gaming chairs allow you to lean right back so you're flat, but the smooth recline motion and comfortable back support curve make up for that, in my opinion. As mentioned, the creaking noise when leaning back doesn't really bother me in the slightest now. The only niggle here is that reclining a long way back without a headrest does lead to some neck stress and tension. This seems unavoidable, given that the chair has no headrest, but we'll come on to that later. For completeness, I should share that I have purchased and used from time to time a tilting footrest to change the angle of my legs and relieve some of the pressure beneath them. Overall, I lean more towards being happy about this particular category, despite that slight neck discomfort. Now, the premium back support offered by the Embody was a key reason that I moved to the Embody over the Aeron 18 months or so ago. I decided to go with the Embody primarily because it gave me that improved upper back or thoracic region support. This was despite me not getting that ah uh, feeling when initially sitting down in the Embody that I got with the Aeron. Today, I'm still a big fan of the upper back support I do suffer from fatigue after being sat in the chair for several hours. I found myself stretching both within and out of the chair. Out of the chair I do both push-ups and pull-ups. Thanks to those of you in the comments that suggested those exercises by the way. I do about 30 or 40 push-ups a day. That really tends to help. My opinion is that no chair is going to completely eliminate that fatigue and slight discomfort that I feel after several hours. I tend to view it as a positive that I'm forced to get up, do some stretches and maybe a household chore or two. So at this point in time, this is a happy category and it is a key reason that I remain happy with my Embody purchase. Okay, let's talk about that headrest, or lack of. I felt when I bought the Embody and still feel that a good chair really should support my head and neck when I recline. I love the Atlas headrest for the Aeron and was genuinely sad to send that back, along with my Aeron 18 months or so ago. Now, my view on the Embody is stronger than ever. Being over six feet tall, I really miss the lack of head and neck support. I well and truly subscribe to the idea that regular adjustments in a chair, including reclining, is essential to getting the most of out of it and reducing the impact that sitting clearly has on one's body. So I'm really, really excited about the Embody headrest that Atlas will hopefully be launching next month. I wanted to add that I have no affiliation to Atlas. My excitement is purely based around my requirement for a headrest and also the brief time I had with their Aeron headrest back in 2021. You probably guessed that this category is of course a grumpy one. Not super grumpy because I'll hopefully be getting my shiny new Atlas Embody headrest soon. Look out for a video from me if you're interested on my thoughts. Okay, we made it. We got through all of those categories. Thanks for staying with me. I am happy I bought that Embody 18 months or so ago. It's absolutely helped me with the upper back pain I did previously experience in my Secret Lab Titan. My only major gripe with the Embody is that lack of headrest. Has the chair changed my life? 
I perhaps wouldn't go that far, but I can say that I no longer find my headspace occupied by whether a different chair would save my poor old office worker back, or perhaps help me get a missed frag on Counter-Strike, my favourite first-person shooter. As always, I hope this video has helped you. I wish you the very best of luck in your comfy chair quest.